hi everyone. Welcome back to Photoshop Elements Imaging Techniques and Tips. I'm your host Ken Keith and um, we're now in our, our second year of making these video tutorials for Photoshop Elements here on Vimeo and on the screen here you'll see the very first uh, tutorial done and that was the photo merge panorama and uh, the subject was a Kansas sunflower field. Everything still applies, it was there but we're going to talk uh, briefly about a few more aspects of panoramas today and this is just a brief one so let's get right to it. Here we are in the organizer and uh, this is a uh, actually a four panel uh, panorama uh, shot uh, with the camera in uh, landscape mode and merged in uh, photo merge panorama in Photoshop Elements 8 now, one of the things that uh, we didn't talk about in the very first episode of uh, making panoramas uh, is uh, how to rotate the camera. And uh, that sounds a little bit funny. Uh, but uh, when you first start shooting, uh, or at least one often thinks about, well, I'm going to uh, bring the camera to my eye, I'm going to uh, go over here to the far left and take a shot and then I'm gonna swing around a little more toward the middle and take a shot and swing around a little more to the right and then I'm gonna pivot around all the way to the to the right and, and take the last picture. Well the the thing that you uh, actually want to do is to pivot the camera around rather than your body. What you're doing is uh, you're going around where the what's called the nodal point, which is the image sensor, and it's the the, the point in the camera's body that's directly behind the lens. Now, when you pan, if you're turning, uh, rotating at the waist, you're rotating around the the center of your head, which is behind the camera, and um, instead, what you want to do is rotate the camera around the middle of its own. Uh, section or frame or its own body instead of yours and um, so uh, can you do this uh, without a tripod yep you can so it's a little tougher maybe takes a little more practice but I tell you what if you can uh, if you've got a nice uh, steady tripod um, it's really going to improve the quality of the end result if you can use that tripod and do the proper uh, shooting uh, process a as described uh, rather than uh, just standing flat-footed and swinging around from the waist. It's really going to help the program to produce a good result. You're going to have sharper results. Now as we talked about in the very first one, what you want to do before you e even start the process of capturing these images is that you want to meter the scene and uh, for this particular one uh, I didn't have much uh, problem metering it's fairly well lit uh, as far as uh, evenness um, there's not a cloud in the sky I've got a lot of uh, areas most of it are sort of neutral uh, tones in it so uh, I'm really not having an exposure problem but I did uh, meter throughout the scene and uh, I just used uh, basically matrix metering uh, on the Nikon or evaluative metering maybe on your camera whatever they call it multi-point uh, right in uh, in the dead center and uh, right in here it gave me an excellent exposure I set the exposure manually then it was probably something like uh, I believe it was 160 at f11 and I set that manually I set my focus manually which is something that you'll want to do also before I made the exposure and and then um, also I have my ISO equivalents at its, its lowest setting and shot all the files in the raw format so those will really help you produce uh, an excellent image. You know, there's one other thing that I had to take into account when shooting this. You notice there are, uh, yeah, there's a there's a road right here. Uh, it's often quite busy, 
and you have part of the interstate system along here. Now many times uh, if you are taking uh, exposures that uh, overlap roads uh, once the program stitches things together you can get some really funky results because you'll have a, a car or a part of a car or part of the same car uh, in in different things uh, different sections and you have to wind up doing some some cloning here so I wasn't uh, too terribly concerned with what was happening here along the interstate uh, because at this um, wide of an angle all the cars are very very small I did try to wait until uh, traffic was a lighter flow and I definitely waited here and you see that um, uh, when I took the the central portion of the picture there was one car here and I was uh, shooting fast enough to have stopped that and when I swung around toward here to make make these two shots the traffic continued to flow and I waited until all that traffic had cleared before making the the final exposures. Now you, you're not in a hurry anyway and, unless you're having a, uh, a fast changing uh, lighting situation so be sure and watch that or, or people walking uh, th through two different frames uh, so it's going to uh, if you pay attention to that as you're going to uh, definitely have um, less to do once these things are merged in uh, cloning and other techniques to get rid of uh, unwanted fragments of, of bodies or cars here's an example of a, of a five panel panorama uh, actually I didn't use all the bits of the five panels but uh, I'm going to uh, point out to you this area right here where you have a, a shadow of a flagpole. This one came out about right at this one and the, the cement here in front of this fountain. You see this area right here. Now nothing was moving and uh, this was shot uh, off of a tripod but you see there is work to be done here so be sure after you uh, get your uh, layer merged uh, and you, all, all those layers are merged into the final, flatten that image, uh, inspect it closely for things such as this that you will have to work on to com complete your panorama. This panorama is a seven panel panorama but uh, it, often we think of when we're doing panoramics as things that's kind of uh, long and skinny or in landscape format but this uh, one the camera was oriented vertically and uh, unlike the the previous uh, five panel uh, landscape uh, this one doesn't have any problem in overlapping uh, there was quite a bit of overlap for seven panels obviously but uh, the only thing that uh, is a little strange that you may or may not want to mess with and that is the uh, shadows of the flagpoles behind me but off, always think of uh, doing these both in a vertical and horizontal format and also if you like you can do some experimentation in the macro mode if you have a macro uh, lens or uh, close-up lenses you can shoot uh, at the other end of the size scale and if you're a subscriber to Photoshop Elements Techniques you get the magazine the May and June issue of 2010 talks a considerably about panoramas in general and there is a uh, blurb that I have there uh, that they included uh, my suggestion uh, to go and make macro panoramas and that's on page 28 of the May June issue. Well, here's a panorama that I did uh, at the same time I was shooting the, uh, the downtown Kansas City one that's called Terminus. Uh, obviously uh, once the once you have merged your layers, flatten the image, you can apply all sorts of special effects and things to your image uh, to uh, in interpret the scene as you like. Now we've got holidays coming up before you know it. There's going to be lots of opportunities perhaps in your area wherever you live to uh, photograph uh, downtown scenes that uh, have extra special holiday lighting here in the Kansas City area we have uh, the famous Country Club Plaza which has uh, holiday lights 
at night starting uh, in, on the Thanksgiving Day, which affords a lot of opportunities for night photography and night panoramic photography. Use your creativity, have a great week, and we'll talk again. Thanks for tuning in.